My shoes are blindingly white. I don't know if you can see them. I was afraid of what teenagers would say online if they saw my regular sneakers. So I bought them one hour ago. Uh, I wish I wasn't like this, but I am. Uh, I'm very, very anxious by nature. I'm a very anxious person. I am trying to fix that. I'm trying to alleviate that. I uh, started smoking weed recently. Do you have any, any weed heads in the house? Sort of a, it was a bit of a doomed excursion since I thought uh, cool people who smoked weed called themselves weed heads. So uh, off to a pretty rocky start. Uh, in New York, all my friends are like driven, accomplished women in media, you know? And, and all my friends in LA are, um, what's the word? Um, unemployed male podcasters. Um, <laughs> so a lot of them have access to weed. Uh, and I hit one of them up and he was like, oh yeah, like this is great, like I can't wait for this. Let's, uh, let's do an edible together. I got this new edible fresh from the dispensary. It's like a, a mist, but also like a breath spray and you spray it in the back of your throat. You get high, it's kind of like a body high, not a heady high. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm a weed girl. Yeah, you awesome, okay. So we go over and we take the edible and if you're not familiar with taking an edible, it's pretty simple. Uh, you ingest the edible and then you wait, you know, anywhere from like an hour and a half to um, the rest of your life for your most toxic memories to just like drop kick you in the back of your throat and send you on like a sweet little roller coaster ride of like your most present anxieties and all the worst things you've ever done to the people who loved you the most, you know. <laughs> So I am a little bit anxious about this, but my friend, you know, he's a pretty good friend, as, as good of a friend as like a, a man can be. And he's like, uh, let's go to a diner. We'll take your mind off this. Let's just go to a diner, we'll eat some food, we'll hang out and it'll be great. So we head to this diner and I'm like, okay, yeah, chill, chill. I can do this, like I'm a weed girl. And you know what? He's right, he's right. We start to eat, we're joking, it's great. I'm forgetting all about the edible and then boom. It hits me. I am weed girl. I am <laughs> as high, I'm maybe the highest I've ever been in my entire life. I am so high and, and it's incredible. I love every single thing that I'm currently experiencing. I'm eating a plate of french fries right now. They, it tastes like rock and roll. It tastes like music. <laughs> And all I want to do is, is experience more. We get another round of food. We get a third round of food. We're at the jukebox picking tunes. We get a fourth round of food and I have like two milkshakes, one in each hand. We're making jokes with the waitress. She hates us. You know, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. And I'm like, more, I need more. And so he's like, let's go for a drive. We go for a drive. We're cruising down the highway. I'm sticking my head out the window like I'm Air Bud. It's glorious. And then all of a sudden it hits me. I am in the most excruciating physical pain in my life. And not just like, oh, you smoked a little bit of weed and you got a little sick. No, like my chest is constricting. I'm sweating. My vision is blurry. My hands are shaking. Like I feel so deeply ill. And I realize in this moment that I am experiencing cardiac arrest. And I'm sorry, people are laughing. It's actually very serious. I have a really serious history of cardiac illness in my family, but even more so, I've confirmed this because I made a Quora account while I was in the car. <laughs> and I asked, is cannabis cardiac arrest? <laughs> and no one answered in two minutes. And so I knew that that meant that the good people of Quora were leaving me alone to wrestle with my own mortality. They were, they were giving me in my last moments just a shred of dignity so I could face, you know, the end like an, like an adult. And, and I'm heartbroken by this, you know what I mean? Like I'm heartbroken by my own impermanence, but I, I'm also so so sad because I don't want to die, you know? And I don't want to die of, of weed. I don't want my mother to have to come and find me in the morgue and, and as she's weeping, you know, just, just completely broken as she waits to identify me. She hears, yeah, roll her in, the, the first girl to die from weed. You know, I, I don't want that for my family. That can't be my legacy. It's, it's heartbreaking. And, and I'm spiraling out about this. I'm so anxious, I'm so sad about this and I realize I'm not just thinking it to myself I am saying it out loud uh, 
And I'm not just saying it to my friend, I am on the phone with first responders. Uh, and they are on their way, so my friend has to pull over in the middle of the highway. We're just like on the bank of the highway somewhere. And suddenly I'm on the ground. I'm just splayed out on the ground, just lying down on the ground. And he's pacing because the optics aren't very good for him, right? Like if the first girl ever to die from weed is just like a black girl at the hands of like an unemployed white podcaster, you know, it's pretty brutal. That's a really brutal headline. So this goes on for some time and then the first responders finally show up and they are three of the hottest, physically widest men I've ever seen in my life. Three men, just a wall, so wide. And uh, you know, one of them comes up to me and is like, hello, uh, ma'am, how's it going? Can you tell me what's going on? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely, it's pretty simple. I am experiencing cardiac arrest. Uh, <laughs> We don't have to get into it. I can send you the link to my Quora account later. All you need to know is that I'm an avid learner. I'm well-educated and I've seen multiple seasons of the hit Fox series, House. I know how this works. You look at me, you think I'm crazy. You turn around to leave, then all of a sudden, blam, I'm splayed out on the ground. Now you have to rush me to the hospital. And you're the arrogant EMTs who ignored the pleas of an ailing woman. Now Dr. House has to solve my mystery illness for 41 to 49 minutes, save commercial break, while he battles his own heartbreaking opioid addiction. <laughs> and the EMT is like, okay. And I'm like, up, 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 not a word from you, because time is of the essence right now, okay? If we can't rush me to the hospital, it's no worries. We'll just bust this bad boy open, do an open heart surgery in the middle of the street, okay? I've also watched a lot of Grey's Anatomy, okay? I got a pen in my back pocket. We bust that open, do a little tracheotomy thing in the street. I'll sign a DNR right now. I don't care. I'll sign it. He's like, okay, um, thank you for that. Um, I personally don't believe that you are experiencing a heart attack. And I'm like, okay, well, we have two different opinions. Let's see what Dr. House has to say. <laughs> He's like, um, also, it will cost you $900 if we drive you to the hospital. And I'm like, that, more on that, more on that. <laughs> He's like, listen, how about, how about I just take a listen to your heart and we'll listen to your heart together and we'll see how that sounds and you know then we can move on from there and i'm like okay that sounds good and so he goes and he gets his stethoscope and he puts it in his ears and as he goes to place it on my chest he uh puts a hand on my back and uh when he does that i let out the biggest burp i ever burped <laughs> in my life um i had gas um, I had gas because I ate like a high person and uh, he burnt me like a baby in the street. 